Mr. Chairman, our final witness is witness 337. You find his statement at page 391. Good afternoon. The chair would now swear you in. Mr. Witness, um, good afternoon. Please repeat after me. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth. Can you hear me? Mr. Witness. Oh, um, right. Thank you. Mr. Witness, um, can you hear me? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for agreeing to testify. If you'd repeat after me, please. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth. Man. I solemnly declare to speak the truth. Truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Questions from council, followed by questions from the panel. Thank you. Uh, the witness was present when the security forces were shooting at the people. You also witnessed shooting from a helicopter overhead. Witness 337, can you please explain what you witnessed on 16th and 17th of November for the tribunal? Yes, but I uh, lived uh, uh, the, uh, there were three places, Sadroy, Shiraz, Golestan, and Guyom. Uh, there were protests. They started on the 25th of Aban, uh, and they were completely um, peaceful. And uh, the most uh, that the protesters were doing were to set tires on fire, and they were blocking the streets, and they were inviting the other people to join them in their protests. Um, among the protesters, there was not a single person who had a weapon in hand. Everything started very peacefully, and uh, people were chanting uh, um, slogans. It was because of the rise in the price of uh, petrol, because they knew that the, with the rise of uh, price in petrol, every other item will be increased as well. And in the area that I uh, lived, where the protests, uh, the protests started, everything was uh, conciliatory, everything was peaceful, and I did not see any kind of uh, violent encounters uh, from the people. Uh, the, the, the most was that uh, they were uh, chanting slogans. But I did uh, feel uh, as if uh, there were people among the people that uh, uh, I could not identify with them because these individuals were provoking others uh, to set uh, buildings on fire. Uh, and uh, uh, I uh, identified uh, two of them, and I saw them in the besieged base in our area the next day. And I realized that whatever had taken place, it was uh, provoked by them. Uh, uh, since I was among the crowd, uh, I can certainly say that none of the ordinary protesters started any kind of violence. No bank was set on fire uh, by uh, ordinary people. And this was, so to speak, the beginning of the protest on the 25th of Oban. 
What shocked me, however, was that in the afternoon of the 25th, I needed to go to um, uh, Sadra Township for something. And when I entered, uh, um, uh, well, I have to say also that in the past, I have also experienced war. And uh, when I re reached there, I realized that that was the same scene. It was a scene of war. On the one hand, you had uh, the ordinary people. On the other um, uh, side, you had the armed uh, uh, individuals who were shooting them. Uh, and I was very shocked, and I uh, could not show any reaction. And then I saw uh, that there was a helicopter away from the ground, uh, uh, maximum 50 meters. And I was away from the helicopter, 100, 110 meters. And uh, at one point, I thought that perhaps this helicopter is taking a film of the protesters so that they can deal with the protesters later on. When the door opened, uh, all of a sudden the helicopter and those inside, they started sh sh uh, shooting volleys of bullets, that's to say, with machine guns. And uh, there were a, a, a lot of protesters there. And in order to disperse them, uh, they were just shooting bullets at them. I could not believe it. Uh, I thought perhaps uh, this is another country that is attacking Iran, because I did have experience with wars. and. Uh, I, I thought perhaps there is a war, but that was not uh, true. It was the military people, military forces, uh, who were shooting ordinary people. And um, uh, 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 there was a 50 or 60 um, meter distance with some protesters. And I saw there was a young person, a small person, 15 or 16 uh, years old. And I'm not sure whether he was Mohammad Dostan Khah or not, because that uh, boy was also the same. Uh, stature and the same age of this person. And I saw myself that he was shot from the helicopter. He fell on the ground. And uh, they, because they didn't want uh, anybody to approach him and to help him, they also shot bullets around him so that nobody could approach uh, th this uh, um, fallen person to help him. So it was a very disturbing scene in my life. As I said, I had experienced war. But I had not seen something like this, that a helicopter shoots a volley of bullets towards um, 15 or 16 years old boy. For a few minutes, I didn't know what to do. I was really shocked. And then uh, when I went to Sadra Township uh, once again, I saw that the, the atmosphere was a very uh, heavy atmosphere. And there was nothing that you could do um, because uh, the suppression uh, on the 25th of Auburn in Sadra Township was very, very uh, serious. And the people were really afraid now because when your hands are empty and the answer that you get is volleys of bullets coming uh, 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 towards you from uh, the helicopter, you're not in a position to resist um, the, the machine gun. After I saw uh, this, uh, I saw also other helicopters uh, that arrived within a, a space of um, uh, three minutes or so. Uh, and uh, the, of course, they, the forces could not come over the ground because all the roads were blocked. But there were six or seven helicopters that appeared in the sky. And uh, they uh, brought forces in them. And they evacuated the forces on the besiege base. And then uh, uh, they started from this base to directly shoot uh, the protesters, the people. And of course, there was no balance anymore. Um, the balance of power had changed. And the helicopters um, had come. They had shot people. They had dispersed. Uh, and they immediately, uh, the besiege forces left the besiege uh, base. Uh, they were, uh, the, so the forces were numerous, because uh, there were lots of people in these six or seven helicopters that reached there, and there was no balance anymore. And they started inflicting assault and battery on uh, ordinary people indiscriminately, man, woman, boy, girl, um, adults, uh, children. They didn't uh, care. And, and uh, I th thought that they were beating people up with the intent to kill them. And, uh, uh, 
uh, of course, uh, um, uh, during the first days of the protest, uh, the um, uh, government had been uh, surprised, and uh, what they were uh, wearing, of course, there were different types of clothing. The besieged had different clothing. The military had different clothing, um, and uh, the plain clothes also had a kind of clothing that you could tell they are uh, from the uh, besiege. And uh, in Golestan area, uh, on the 25th, uh, you had protests, but you had no uh, clashes. On the uh, 26th, in another township, there was also protests. Uh, and Amir Azandi, who was a, an innocent youth, was killed there. Uh, uh, I, uh, I was not in a, um, contact with this person, unfortunately, but I realized that afterwards that he was not uh, killed on the spot. Uh, he had received a bullet in his stomach. He had fallen to the ground. They did not allow anybody to um, lift him up and um, take his uh, half-dead body uh, to the hospital. And they had, uh, of course, uh, intimidated the um, um, uh, uh, the medical staff, the nurses, the doctors not to treat him, and he bled to death. That's how he died. And um, I do not know what else I have to um, say and, uh, uh, and how I, uh, logically I can explain everything. I am talking at the same time. I feel very emotional because many of the people who died were uh, very young uh, people or adolescents. And uh, even uh, elderly people, they did not have any mercy on them. And it's very difficult to know that, for example, Amir Alvandi, who was a youth, was not killed immediately because of the bullet itself, but because of lack of care, because he bled to death. And the doctors who were, and nurses who were at the hospital uh, who were intimidated and did not take care of him until the very end of their lives, they have to feel the regret because of, they did not help him. I uh, would have uh, very much liked to, to uh, testify here with my uh, face uncovered so that you could see me. Um, but unfortunately, we are dealing with a regime that uh, even if it were possible for them uh, to catch me alone, still I wouldn't mind. But uh, we are unfortunately dealing with a regime that they don't stop at the person uh, himself. They are going to harass and persecute uh, the family as much as they can in order to break, break this one person um, himself. And I'm uh, really apologizing to everybody and the, to the people of Iran that I've had to um, testify like this. I would have liked to say who I am, what my name is, what my family name is, but I, I am located for myself. I don't fear it. But for the security of my family, I feel compelled to appear here and to testify this way. And therefore, I apologize to the people of Iran, to all the families who have uh, um, uh, lost their loved ones during uh, the protests of Oban, to be here like this and to testify like this. Brave to come forward and make this statement. You have made a reference in your statement that the, one of the conditions that they release the bodies to the families was to bury them in a different city. Can you explain that to the tribunal a bit further? Uh, Yes, uh, um, during the days following what I was telling you about, I went to the township of Sadra and I was um, looking uh, for those who had been killed by the volleys of bullets. And unfortunately, I uh, could not uh, find anything, any signs, any um, um, clothing, anything, until such time that I talked to one of the families of uh, somebody who had been killed, and this family told me that they do not have the right to 
uh, have, have mourning for this person who was killed. They have to go back to their village to do this. And even Amir al bandi Meher's body was given to the family after six days. So they would not uh, even um, let go of the body. They had taken the bodies hostage. Unfortunately, they are afraid even of the bodies. And to me, for it was very interesting that they did not allow any family um, to have a memorial for the killed ones uh, to mourn. And they had uh, um, forced everybody that to take the bodies uh, to their uh, villages, to other places, and to bury them and to have uh, to mourn them. Uh, and uh, for uh, many of the families, they had threatened them uh, that the condition of delivering the body would be that they would be silenced afterwards. There was a family that, who had lost the 20-year-old a girl, and they had told the, the family, if uh, um, we have the name, your name or interviews um, in the media, you will never see your uh, daughter. And not uh, so simply, they had uh, uh, given them, uh, talk to them in sexual slurs that we will take your daughter and we'll do lots and lots of things to her if you talk. The tribunal may have some questions for you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Witness, and, and by the way, do not be in the least concerns. I'm, I'm not surprised that you appear as you do with a uh, family to care for. Um, thank you for being here. I, I have a question to ask about one incident. It's the tear gassing that occurred on the 18th of November, and if I understand your statement, there was a crowd out on the street, security forces were there, and a large amount of tear gas was shot out into that crowd. So people ran, and they ran into an alley where several homes were, but the security courses, or forces followed them and shot more tear gas there. They broke the windows of homes, and they shot tear gas, if I understand you, into the homes, which resulted in people having to flee their own homes, including mothers with small babies. Is that what happened? Have I understood that incident correctly? Uh, Yes, yes, uh, this happened in uh, Golestan, the Golestan township of the city of Shiraz on the 27th of Oban when they started cracking down on people in Golestan uh, township. Um, they uh, uh, had both uh, shootings and uh, they, uh, they had tear gas. Um, there was a lot of tear gas and of course uh, people were uh, running away and they were dispersing and uh, some homes open their doors so that people could take shelter in. And when the uh, security forces, they saw that, um, they broke the windows uh, and uh, they would even shoot inside the uh, homes and uh, uh, throw um, tear gas in them. And I saw that because of uh, the tear gas in the houses, uh, there were uh, older women who uh, couldn't breathe, who had to leave the house. There were um, babies who had, who had to be taken out. Uh, that's something that I uh, experienced myself and I saw it. There was a lot of tear gas that was being thrown. And I'm wondering what happened after that. When, and what I mean is what happened immediately after people left their homes. I'm assuming there was a large amount of tear gas in the air. And I think it's fairly common knowledge that tear gas does not disappear quickly. It spends some time in the air before it finally leaves. Were these families and the individuals who were there, did they then have to flee the alley back in the direction of the security forces? Did they have another place they could go? What happened after that, immediately after that? If you know, obviously. <laughs> A few houses that I saw, I'm just talking from what I saw, not from what I heard. I saw a few houses that had given asylum to individuals. So all the members of the house had to leave and to flee with the ordinary people and to shelter. A few houses which have done so, they were forced to go to the streets. And it took a few, it sometimes takes a few hours for the tear gas to disappear. And 
there, there, it was slowly raining, so all these people had to wait on the rain for all what happened. And during that period of time, did the security forces leave them alone, or was there more problem? In other words, were they... I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, the number of the security forces were not so high to f chase everyone. There were about 50 or 60 in Golestan Township. We were about 1,500 to 2,000. I cannot exactly say how many we were, but they were just 50 people almost. So they could not chase everyone. They were just trying to scatter people. They were not really trying to chase anyone to arrest them because of their limited number. So people were trying to uh, flee in different directions. They were trying to uh, scatter people in different directions so that they, they could not join each other afterwards. And they were using tear gas as well. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, no more questions from the panel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Mr. Witness. Would you allow me to uh, add one sentence, one small sentence, please? I am grateful to all those who have made efforts to hold this tribunal. As an Iranian living in Iran, I believe that this tribunal dealing with this war crime is warm heart, uh, heartwarming, especially for those who have lost their loved ones. From far, I would like to thank all of you, and I wish you success. A dictatorial regime will be frightened to carry on with its deeds, especially if such tribunals would exist. Thank you, Mr. Witness, and thank you for um, coming to give evidence before the tribunal. We appreciate and will take into account everything you've said.